All right, so in our previous assignment, I did this really cool simulation in MATLAB using all the stuff we learned in class, rotation matrices, moments of inertia, equations of motion. I was able to make a program that would simulate cylinders and their motion based on just some initial parameters, such as this video simulating an ice skater bringing their arms in to speed up. It's even versatile enough that I'm using it for our diving project right now. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of hot. Yet, despite all this coolness, I lost precisely 0.1 points because they would have liked to see me implement Euler angles. So I figured I would make this video on Euler angles. But when I looked into them, I found that they were basically the same thing we already learned. According to Wikipedia, what we learned in class with the phi theta psi is actually a subset of Euler angles called Tate-Bryan angles. As I understand it, the only difference is that Tate-Bryan angles are defined between each intermediate reference frame, whereas the more general Euler angles are all defined at the start. Alright, so that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Just kidding. So I dug a bit deeper and found something much more interesting. A problem with both of these systems of measurement. Something called gimbal lock. Here's a gif of a gimbal from Wikipedia that shows it much better than I could ever describe it. You may recall the professor mentioning some of this during class. Basically, these rings represent each of the degrees of freedom the plane can rotate around. Well, it's possible for two of these rings to line up, like this. When this happens, it's impossible to distinguish whether the plane is rotating due to this inner blue ring or the outer purple one. We say that the plane has lost a degree of freedom, and this is what causes gimbal lock. If you remember rotation matrices, we can show this mathematically. This orientation happens when our second angle, theta, is at an angle of pi over 2. Plugging this into the matrix and simplifying with some trig identities, we end up with this as our final rotation matrix. The problem is that all of these sine and cosine terms are based on phi plus psi. So, if say the sum was 6, we couldn't tell if phi was 2 and psi 4, or phi 4 and psi 2, or 1 and 5, or 5 and 1, or anything else. Each angle can't be known only their sum. And this isn't just a funny quirk with math, it actually affects real life. Notably, the Apollo missions had a gimbal used to measure the orientation of the control module. There's actually a way to solve the problem of gimbal log by adding a fourth ring that's actively kept away from the others, but the NASA engineers decided the advantages of the redundant gimbal seems to be outweighed by the equipment's simplicity, size advantages, and corresponding implied reliability of the direct three degrees of freedom unit. Yeesh, these guys really were engineers. Anyways, gimbal lock would inevitably happen, and to fix it they had to manually realign the rings using the stars. Not fun. So how can we get around this issue? The answer? Quaternions. Now this might sound like a big scary math word, and I won't lie, that's because it is a big scary math word. This video will barely scratch the surface of what quaternions are and what they can do. Sorry, I just think I'm too stupid to understand this. So, I've left most of my sources in the description. They technically live in 4D space, and our feeble human brains can't visualize that, but there's a bunch of videos from 3Blue1Brown whose visualizations of quaternions are super helpful. That being said, what are quaternions? Quaternions were actually invented before vectors, but uh, since vectors exist now and most of you understand them, I'll use them to help with the explanations. Quaternions are basically a scalar plus a vector. Now this might sound weird, we've always been told that scalars can add to scalars and vectors can add to vectors, but they can't intermingle. So what we do is we describe our vector using unit vectors. I'm sure you're all familiar with the i, j, k notation. i is the x component, j is the y component, and k is the z component. The trick with quaternions is that these i's, j's, and k's are actually complex numbers. You know the idea that the square root of negative 1 is i? Yeah, these are the same i's. In fact, all three follow the same sort of definition. All three of them are the square root of negative 1. And if you multiply all three together, you also get negative 1. Yeah, it's pretty weird, I agree. The biggest thing we care about is quaternion multiplication. If you have two quaternions, we can pretty easily just distribute each term to the others, like we've learned in basic algebra class. The catch comes with multiplying the unit vectors that get dragged along with them. This table from Wikipedia is a pretty big help. Notice that the multiplication is not commutative, which means i times j does not equal j times i. But it is associative, which means it doesn't matter which we multiply first, i times j and k, or i and j times k. So if we expand everything and collect like terms, we get something like this, 
which is itself another quaternion. It is a real part and three imaginary parts. This is all rather oversimplified, and because of the time limit of this video, I'm only scratching the surface. Again, please check out some of the videos in the description. I can't recommend them enough. So, how can we use quaternions to express rotation? Well, let's look back at Euler angles, where we have three rotations about three different axes. Instead, we could rotate about some arbitrary axis by a single angle. This axis depends on how much we want to rotate in each of the three directions, but the entire motion can be simplified to just one axis. So we have a vector representing our direction and a scalar representing our angle about that axis. And what else has a vector and a scalar? That's right, quaternions. The actual representation for our rotation looks something like this. The reason they're sines and cosines is because of Euler's formula for complex exponentiation. But all we really care about is that this is the real part and this is the vector part. The vector u that we input here is a unit vector in the direction of the axis we want to rotate about, and theta is the amount we rotate. Once we have this quaternion q, our rotation of some vector p is given by this. The rotated vector equals our rotation quaternion times the original vector times what's called the complex conjugate of our rotation quaternion. This is basically just the rotation quaternion, but the imaginary parts are all negative. Anyways, by actually carrying out this multiplication, we get a rotated vector. And to prove this works, you can actually convert quaternions to rotation matrices using all this junk, or vice versa, convert Euler angles to quaternions using all of this junk. But that's a lot of math we don't have time for right now. Instead, I coded up a quick example of MATLAB. Turns out there's this thing called the Aerospace Toolbox, which allows for a bunch of cool aerospace simulation stuff that actually makes all my cylinder code before kind of irrelevant. But more importantly, it has some quaternion functions to MATLAB. So we start with the vector that we want to rotate and make it into a quaternion by adding a zero scalar term to the front. Then if we define a direction and angle of rotation about that direction, we can define our rotation quaternion q and its complex conjugate like this. Then we just multiply using the built-in function, and voila, our rotated quaternion. Notice how the real part of the final quaternion is still zero, indicating it's just a vector. And our example makes intuitive sense. We rotated a vector along the y-axis by 90 degrees about the x-axis, which gives us a vector pointing along the z-axis. Now, I could even use this to rewrite some of the code that I made for my cylinder simulation. Here's what it used to be. That's quite big. And here's what it would be using quaternions. That's kind of small. Alrighty, so those were quaternions. Assuming this video is edited correctly, I should be just about out of time, but there's loads more to discuss, so I once again encourage you to check out the links in the description. The applications of these things are actually crazy. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. I don't know why you people are watching anymore. It's, the point has been made, you've seen all you need to see, move on.